Hey everybody, welcome back to Keeping It Real with Marilyn and Steve. And today we have another depression era recipe for you. We're going to be making a fruit buckle. We're gonna make it with apples and blueberries today, but this is something you can use any kind of fruit. You can use pears, peaches, use your imagination and try it with your favorite fruit. And let's get going on our recipe. So this recipe has three different stages that we're gonna go through. So we're gonna start with getting our pan ready, getting our oven preheated, and then we're gonna go on from there. So we're gonna be preheating our oven to 375 degrees. We're gonna be using an eight by eight pan. It can be metal, it can be glass, whatever works. Um, and we are going to grease our pan using shortening. Um, one thing that I tell people is you can grease your pan with other things. However, I have noticed that using different things like oil or butter does make a difference on how it comes out. So I have always followed this recipe as it stands using the shortening to grease my pan. You don't have to go crazy with it, just enough to make sure that your pan is covered and you get in the corners and it just makes it a lot easier to be able to get your cake out later. So we have our pan ready and I have my oven preheating to 375. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to prep our topping before we get to the batter. So we're going to be doing our crumble topping and then we're gonna get on to our fruit topping. So for our crumble topping, we're using two tablespoons of butter. And this, I use an unsalted butter. I haven't found a difference between salted and unsalted, but I do use the unsalted butter. To that, we are going to add half a cup of sugar and a quarter cup of flour. And then we are going to add in a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon. So now I'm gonna use my pastry cutter and I'm gonna get this all mixed together and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. This topping is going to be used on your fruit and it's kind of like a, the same kind of topping you'd use on a streusel or a coffee cake. So now this is your good blend, how it should look when it's mixed. You don't want any big chunks of butter so that it gets spread evenly across the top of your fruit buckle. So now that we have our crumble topping done, we're gonna move on to what we're gonna do for our fruit topping. So today I'm actually gonna be making two different fruit buckles. One is gonna be made with apples and one is gonna be made with blueberries. Now I recommend four to five medium to large apples or approximately two cups of blueberries. These are ones I had in the freezer. I actually have three cups of blueberries here. Um, and I will say always better to err on the side of a little extra fruit than not having enough. And that'll make sense when you see us put it on top of the batter. So I'm gonna get these apples sliced and, well, peeled, cored, and sliced and ready to go. And then we'll be back to move on to our batter. I have the apples all cored, peeled, and sliced. And just to show you how I've got them sliced, they're sliced like you would for a pie, um, just any kind of apple. Um, I know people are gonna ask, does it matter? Is it a Mac? Is it a Cortland? Is it you know, um, Honeycrisp? It doesn't matter whatever kind you wanna use, just as if you were making a pie, same kind of idea. So we're gonna leave these as they are and we're gonna move on to making the batter. So now that our fruit toppings are ready, we're gonna move on to making our batter. We're going to start with a quarter of a cup of shortening. And again, as I said before, you can do substitutions. Um, I can't vouch for how things are gonna come out if you do, 
I've always used shortening making this recipe, um, but if you want to try using something else like butter, you can. The next thing we're going to do is a half a cup of sugar. Now I'm going to take my pastry cutter and again I'm going to mix in the shortening and the sugar real quick. Once I have that mixed together, I'll be right back. Now that I have the shortening and the sugar mixed, we're going to add one egg. And we're going to mix the egg in with the shortening and sugar until that's mixed in well. And then we're going to add in a half a cup of milk. And we want to mix this until we don't have any lumps. So we're just going to stir this in together, pressing out any of the shortening and sugar lumps until this is fairly smooth. Now that we have that mixed in, we're going to add one cup of flour. And we're going to add in a half teaspoon of salt and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And then we're gonna stir that all together and that will finish up making our batter. Now, this is a great recipe um, from during that depression time because when things were in short supply or things were rationed, you weren't using a large amount of any particular item. It wasn't like three cups of flour and uh, four cups of sugar and five eggs. It, it was a little bit of each and you could make it using the fruit that you had in season. So now that we have this mixed together, we'll move on to the next step. Now that our batter is mixed, we're just going to put it into the pan. So it doesn't look like a lot of batter, but it does rise. So we're just going to get this scraped out into our pan. Now I'm just going to evenly spread the batter over the bottom of the pan and get it ready to put the fruit topping on. All right, so don't worry if your apples get a little brown while you're doing the rest of your mixing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put the apples in on the bottom, lay them out kind of like you do when you're doing a, uh, a pie. We just want to evenly cover the top of our batter. And when we get to the end of a row, we're just going to put the next row right next to it. Just want to pretty much cover the top of the batter. If you have some small pieces, you can slide them in. All right, let me get the top of this covered and I'll be right back. So I've got the apples layered in and now we're ready to put on our crumb topping. So now we're going to take the crumb topping that we made earlier and we're just going to sprinkle it over the top. And this really is going to be amazing when it is done. So let's get this and we're going to bake this in the oven, as I said earlier, at 375 degrees for about 40 minutes. Um, and as I had said earlier, I'm making both an apple and a blueberry. So let me finish this up and then I'll show you how I layer out the blueberries. So I made another batter for the blueberry. And all I'm going to do is take my blueberries and I'm going to make a nice layer of fruit across the top until I have this all covered. Be right back and show you when it's done. So out of the three cups of blueberries that I had thawed, I used two cups to cover the top fairly evenly. 
And now, like we did with the apple, we're gonna cover it with our crumb topping. And I'll show you both of them as soon as I'm done. So now that we have both our blueberry and our apple buckle all complete, we're gonna put these in the oven. As I said, 375 degrees for about 40 minutes. I'm gonna start checking them at 30 minutes and then we'll go from there. So the apple and blueberry buckles are both out of the oven. And here is the side to see what it looks like. And the end, so you can see the cake at the bottom and then the topping and the streusel topping. It's really, really delicious. So now we have to get Steve to try it and see how he likes it. So Steve is going to give this a try. I would cut the blueberry, but it's already spoken for. My son is gonna be picking this up to take to his house. So we're gonna have some of the apples. So Steve's gonna let us know what he thinks. I will. This is my favorite part of these videos. It's good, it's super moist. Um, it's almost like the batter expands and pushes all the fruit up to the top. And the streusel topping kind of gives a, uh, a crunch and a sweetness to the top. It's really good. So this is something that I grew up with. So it's not something Steve had before we got together. And it's something that my siblings make and my kids now make. So if you like having a little something extra as a dessert or a snack, or you have your favorite fruit that you want to try this with, make sure you let us know in the comments if you give this a try, um, especially if you use something else other than apples or blueberries, how it came out and how you liked it. And until next time, everybody, take care. Bye.